In this lecture, we're going to be talking about uh, this concept called omni-channel marketing, which is a fairly new concept. Uh, and it is one that has really been kind of brought about by digital marketing, which we've talked about before. Uh, and so in this lecture, we're going to really explore omni-channel marketing so that you have a decent understanding of it and how it works. And we're going to compare it to maybe some of the more traditional forms of marketing that have been around for uh, generations. So for the starters, let's talk about really what omni-channel marketing is. Um, and it can go by omni-channel retail. It shows up in many different forms. But really the whole omni-channel is, is, you know, omni meaning one. Uh, is really all about creating uh, or developing what we call a fully integrated approach to commerce. So instead of developing all of these individual channels, uh, what I'm doing is I'm creating sort of like uh, all of these channels are sort of working together uh, for the purpose of you know, marketing my products or services uh, to consumers. And so what I'm trying to do is provide, or let's say, well, provide, I'm trying to provide shoppers with a unified experience. And so this is a popular marketing strategy or that's used by many successful businesses today, uh, including companies like Nike and Warby Parker and Bonobos uh, and a lot of companies that started off as maybe e-commerce companies only uh, and have since developed brick and mortar locations, which is kind of like a flip strategy where a lot of businesses started with a physical location and then developed the e-commerce and many kind of uh, established businesses are trying to cultivate that. Uh, we're seeing almost the reverse with many of these e-commerce businesses now putting in physical locations, but using them a little bit differently than traditional brick and mortar locations have been utilized. So real quick, just so you kind of understand, because omnichannel can be a little bit confusing and trying to wrap your mind around it. So uh, let's go through just an example of maybe a traditional uh, kind of marketing channel. And so the traditional marketing channel uh, would involve, let's say, the consumer. And the consumer is going to go to, let's say, a brick and mortar. Can't even spell brick. That's not a good sign. Uh, brick and mortar, so a physical location. And they go to a physical location and they purchase a product and they leave. Uh, that would be kind of a traditional channel. Uh, it's a very single channel. Um, you can, of course, include, let's say, e-commerce. And so the consumer, in this case, is interacting with a website. But this is still a, a single channel, right? There's still uh, just interaction with one particular form, and then you know all of the marketing is encompassed in that. And what we're finding today is that in order to be successful and communicate with customers, because frankly, with digital marketing, one of the unfortunate by byproducts has been so many businesses are trying to communicate with customers, it's really hard to get through all of the different messages, right? There are so many businesses that are competing for our attention and it makes it difficult for some businesses to kind of get through all of that noise. Uh, and so what we're seeing today is that businesses are utilizing an omni-channel approach, which means they're using all of these different channels together to not only convey a consistent message, but to create a very consistent experience for consumers as they're shopping. So the way that I want you to think about kind of a an omni-channel or multi-channel marketing uh, is with the consumer at the center. And on the outskirts, you have all of the different ways that consumers can, can market. And so I'm going to show this kind of model, and then we'll walk through a few examples uh, of things that companies do uh, with regards to omni-channel, so it kind of makes a little bit more sense kind of on a practical level. Uh, so we'll have, let's say we have a physical location, which is very common for a lot of businesses, but not necessarily a requirement. And so that's one channel that we have, of course. Uh, and then we also have email, and so we have a website, uh, and when customers purchase information or purchase products, we allow them to opt in. So we save their email so we can communicate with them later on. 
one of the more effective forms of marketing. And if you're ever starting a business, I can't emphasize enough, make sure you collect emails early because even though you might not use them right away, uh, it is helpful when you're releasing new products or offering new services, you've got a group of people who have already kind of said they like what you do to some degree. Uh, and so that's a great place to start, right? With a warm lead versus somebody who you've had no interaction with, doesn't know you, and is going to take more convincing, which is much more expensive to convert that person to a paying customer. So we've got a physical location. We've got email. We obviously have our website. So we have an e-commerce business as well. And so we can utilize our website to not only, um, you know, obviously engage in transactions, but we can use that to also collect consumer data. Uh, and so that's very helpful as well. We have our social media platforms that we use to communicate with customers. And so we can use that not only to get feedback from customers, but also to provide information fairly quickly on new products or different things that are changing within the business. Uh, and then we can also utilize what we call PPC ads, which are commonly referred to simply as pay per click. And so these are advertisements that we can show, whether it's in Google search results, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram or other social media platforms. And we pay based upon the number of people that actually click or impressions, which represents the number of people that actually see them. That's kind of the, the other way that we could charge based upon that. Uh, and let's see if we can throw another one in there. Uh, let's throw in direct mail. That's a pretty expensive form of marketing, but let's just throw that in there. Uh, and so let's say we're going to do kind of a, an omni-channel sort of uh, marketing, and that's really our strategy. Uh, and so we're going to try to use that in an effort to kind of, um, you know, drum up more business. Now, again, the whole purpose of these is these particular channels all work together. And so these aren't necessarily individual silos. Uh, where I'm interacting with the website and that information is stored there, but I'm using all of these channels in a way to market to consumers. And that becomes really, really important. So uh, just as one example, let's say that we have a customer and they end up on our website. We um, run a, a PPC ad targeting certain users and they end up going to our website. So they start here and then eventually they make their way over here and go to our website. And on our website, uh, we use, uh, let's say they look at a couple products, uh, but they don't actually purchase anything. Uh, and so we've got some code on our website that let's say um, kind of uh, tracks them, if you will, and just kind of tags them. Uh, and so now on our social media, they're going to see remarketing advertisements uh, based upon some of the things that they looked at. And maybe they end up making an actual purchase. And so let's say through this process, they end up coming back here to our website and they actually make a purchase. This is an example of omni-channel because we're using all of these different marketing tools, not all of them in this example, but we're using multiple different tools to try to get to our what our goal or objective is. In this case, obviously, our goal is to increase conversions, the number of people that are actually purchasing from our website. So this is one way that you might be able to do it. Uh, another example, now because they've purchased, we have their email. And so now we might email them with different types of offers. And let's say we've got some sort of grand opening event or something going on in a brick and mortar location. And so we might, another interaction, uh, we might send them an email and notify them of something of a sale going on on our web and our brick and mortar location. And so that then encourages them to go to the actual physical location and to actually make a purchase. Uh, or maybe they go to our website, make a purchase and pick it up curbside at the physical location. Uh, or we can do some kind of delivery service. And so again, you're looking at all of the different channels here and each one is not separate in itself but kind of in some way helps support the other channels uh, and this becomes really really important here uh, and so again kind of the purpose of this is one to create this fully uh, unified approach to marketing right we want to be consistent especially considering all of the information that consumers are inundated with each and every day it's really important to use all of the different 
platforms and marketing channels, whether it's email and social media and advertisements, uh, in a way that's going to kind of further people along our sales funnel and get them to the point to where they're kind of a casual user, if you will, just kind of checking us out and looking at our brand, uh, and then getting further to the point to where they're actually making a purchase, and we can have a strategy behind how we utilize each of these things, right? In the example I gave you initially, our PPC ads might be the top of the funnel and might be used just to generate awareness, get people to the site, look at our uh, the, what we've written on our website, look at our products, know we exist, and then from there, we can target them with maybe some social media ads that kind of take it a step further give them access to new information or from our website, we can have them sign up for our email list and then we can send them some other information that gives them a deeper understanding of our business and hopefully uh, kind of convinces them to want to purchase from us. Uh, but we're using all of these things together. Now this is very complicated obviously and it takes a lot of work and a lot of time to try to figure out how you're going to utilize each of them because if you're not careful then it kind of becomes throwing darts at a dartboard and you're just marketing with each of them, but they're kind of contradicting one another or they're overlapping uh, on some of the objectives, which at that case, you're just going to end up wasting a lot of money. But that's really how Omnichannel is kind of working to this point. Uh, and so we're seeing again, companies that have a brick and mortar location, they're beginning to utilize that in some way, shape or form, um, and then encouraging online purchases, but using some of the other forms of digital marketing to provide access to information, to get feedback, to remarket to customers, to reach new customers. And again, if used effectively, can be a really great way to market and a great way to grow your business.